so can't go live on YouTube yet. Ah, uh, I guess they're gonna hold my. Uh, whoops, oh, that's not gonna work either. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, they're not gonna let me go live on YouTube yet because we just created this account and. Uh, Oh, that's for the RTMP server. I can't copy that. Huh. Oh, well, I guess I can't, uh, can't do that. <sighs> I gotta close this door. All righty. Yeah, so I couldn't do a walk at Fleming. I went to the I went to the Sutherland campus to to I was gonna go cruise around, go for a little walk, um, and then yeah, YouTube won't let me stream uh, or go. Or won't, it won't let me go live uh, uh, because the account is too new, I guess. So. That's too bad. So sad. We're just going to have to do the next best thing. So when I was out yesterday, yesterday I went out, uh, you know, one funny thing I, is, uh, yeah, I realized sometimes that I don't get very much bush time. I don't get to go hang out outside too much and it, it gets to me. But, uh, so then we start. we just started making sure that I'm planning to, to get the outside time that I need to be able to go listen to my birds and everything like that. But yeah, we, uh, I went out yesterday, uh, went out yesterday to, uh, get bark for bark baths. So I went out, uh, I could just show you here. I went out, um, to get mainly to get alder but yeah i got alder here a couple real big ones and uh man i really loved it so i got get to all of the alder trees and then take off all of the bark and then we use that like baths uh so i could show you the way that that looks we take all of the bark off and we make them into like real nice little scroll looking things but while I was out there, I I um, was taking as many pictures as, of as many plants as I could because I figure, it, <laughs> I figure, uh, oh, I can't go back all the way. But yeah, I figured something would happen today <laughs> that, that, that I wouldn't be able to go live. I don't know why, I just knew it. Uh, so I just took a bunch of pictures of a bunch of different plants and then uh, there's a residual picture of Jim Carrey in that file, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so Alder, um, uh, what I wanted to do today is take you out for a little walk and then just cover some identification to cover some of the names of the different plants and so that you have a little bit of a tool so that when you're outside, you'll be able to uh um say the name of whatever whatever the plant is that you're seeing um uh, finding the the nishtava name for all of these different plants uh was one of our first biggest goals and be, because of that i guess it's one of my favorite things to be able to share uh just to get us to the point where we're able to uh call the plant by its Nishave name, the, the original name that it had, uh, but then understand the common names for for them as well, uh, uh, and then understanding the scientific name to ensure that proper identification, uh, and then that really solidifies all three. Uh, so, so that's what that's uh, what what I want to do today. Um, so Alder, uh, Alder is where where's my got to make sure I'm, you guys aren't uh, 
that I'm watching the chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions about anything, just uh, slap her down and ask. Um, so the first one is Alder. And uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to have to stay on a separate window to be able to do this. Just weird uh, to be able to flip through the pictures. Uh, but if I go full screen like that, it should look a lot better. Anyway, um, uh, Alder is uh, Alnus Incana. I, I, Incana? I don't know. Uh, the Latin name. <laughs> uh, but the common name, Alder, there's all different kinds. That's, I don't want to get too crazy about all the Latin names. But all the Alders are uh, um, good to use all in the same way, using them for bark baths. But uh, Alder... Uh, there's speckled alder and tag alder and and uh, um, I think there's like six species of alder that we have in Canada uh, and two of them are transcontinental. I think uh, we're going to have mainly speckled alder and green alder is going to be uh, transcontinental. They're going to occur all across the uh, Canada uh, but yeah, we call most of them, uh, there's two different ways that we call this tree in the, in the Shlamenwind. So we will call it, uh, uh, some people will call it Kadaewigo um, Asens. And there's no such thing as, uh, or well, uh, until you get way into the south, south but Kadaewigo um, Asens. Uh, but this is Kadaewigo um, Asens. And uh, so it's, it has that diminutive suffix at the at the end of the name to be able to make sure you understand that it's small, which is what alder is. Alder doesn't grow to be a very big tree. It's just a tiny little guy. Uh, but you see why we call it Kadaewigo uh, Asens, um, little black birch, is because it's got these the lenticels on it. Um, uh, and um, it is a part of the birch family. You see the leaves look just look look just like birch leaves uh, it's, it's really really hard to differentiate a uh, young uh, green alder uh, probably a young tag alder tag alder is going to have the the cones on it as well but anyway uh, f uh, you can't tell it apart from a young yellow birch they just are absolutely identical uh, I don't know any techniques anyway and until we're cracking them open to take the bark off and then you're able to smell the difference uh, where the uh, yellow birch uh, wean sick is going to smell like wintergreen it's going to smell like gum real good toothpaste uh, but yeah uh, so we'll call it Kadawiga sense but then when you get a little bit more north we'll call it uh, um, a dope wash or some people will just say a dope uh, a dope wash and so that's a, this is a really good tree. We use mainly for, uh, uh, the bark is mainly for medicine for your skin. And I've been on a little bit of a rampage lately on all of my social media to make sure that everybody understands this, to, to give yourself the opportunity to experience how amazing Dopoyash uh, uh, or Alder is at helping to heal your skin. Your skin is the largest organ that you have and we treat it very bad uh, and so when you get give yourself give your skin a little taste of alder and what it what it's capable of uh, you feel it your skin feels so good you feel like a frog you feel like you could breathe through your skin that's the that's the, what everybody always says uh, and then your skin looks really good too right right after uh, like the, the, the next day people are able to understand that this medicine is really helping them. Uh, so yeah, it's a really, really good tree. Give your skin everything that it needs to work properly. We even find ourselves using it very often for autoimmune diseases. Uh, but yeah, it does look nice when it's like that full screen. Eh? So here's Alder again. I'll go back. Uh, Alder, uh, Topoyash, Alness, all Alness. I got bit by so many mosquitoes just standing here staring at that knot. <laughs> it looked so cool. I was like, wow, it looks so friggy. And then, yeah, the, the way that we take the bark off, knock the whole thing down, and, and uh, I just uh, slid it all the way up and then pop the bark off. Uh, but this is a cool one. This is a really common, uh, common species. Um, uh, 
we'll call it Josh Shogelman. Josh Shogelman is Bunchberry. And uh, Bunchberry is a shrub, which is weird because it looks like a little flower. It's a very small little plant. You can see some of these uh, little gold threads back there and little uh, uh, winter greens in the background. Uwin uh, Sivak. But yeah, this is a very small plant, but it, technically it's a shrub. Uh, and and the, the shrub, the, these flowers, well, technically they're not flowers, uh, but this, these will turn into uh, big, bright orange berries. And where they sit in the plant, right in the, right in the center, a lot of people will call this uh, Josh Shagomen. Uh, Josh Shagomen is just describing what the, fla- what the, what the berries, the nun are doing is piercing or look at are, are coming right out of the middle those berries are piercing right into the the middle of the of the uh plant is what it looks like in the fall and so that's what we will call it josh shogelman and uh there's actually quite a few plants it's kind of frustrating but there's quite a few plants that have that name uh and it bothers me a little bit but i am always trying to figure out what other people call them and so it's good to put some of these tools some of these resources and these knowledge out on uh, platforms like this to help us be able to gather some of these answers to these questions but yeah this is a shrub cornus it's the dogwood uh it's in the same family as dogwoods and uh one really cool thing about the flowers is those flowers are not uh uh, th- these are not white flower petals. Those are leaves that the plant has changed to become white. Uh, <laughs> so they're just white leaves, albino leaves, and the plant does this itself. Uh, so that uh, and the flowers are actually very tiny little things in the middle, uh, all those little speckles. That's where the, what the flower really is. And so it attracts pollinators by sight. And so bees and flies and. Uh, uh, my daughter just taught me that male mosquitoes as well are, are pollinators, which really suck to hear. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, they, they come flying in because they see a nice white flower. And then, uh, and then, yeah, they get hit with a bunch of pollen. And then they, <laughs> and, but there's nothing really there to eat. So it has to fool all of these uh, creatures to p- pollination. And it does that with these big, massive, adapted leaves to become white. But yeah, bunchberry cornus canadensis, I think, is uh, is a really amazing medicine uh, 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 plant. Who is it main? the The main place that it's used often is with kids. It's uh, like a children's medicine. Uh, sometimes uh, you you hear well you hear of I I haven't really used it I haven't had too many too much experience with it mainly because we're able to uh, accomplish this using other uh, um, we don't even have to resort to medicine but uh, for colicky babies babies who have colic uh, sometimes this can be really hard to control really hard to manage uh, and so. Um, that's how this plant was used. And so my grandma, you know, she was a midwife and uh, well, her mom was a midwife and she grew up following her mom and understands all these little tricks. And uh, so that's some of the feedback that she was able to give us is that, yeah, when they can't stop crying, that's that's what this is going to be. That's how this helps. And um, uh, but yeah, generally we're, we're just going to uh, um, we'll say no lights, no for colicky babies, we'll say no artificial lights. Uh, uh, just let it get dark naturally, and then uh, and then also uh, to change the diet of mommy and introducing probiotics, uh, probiotic supplementation for for the baby uh, with with little drops you could buy. But yeah, that's usually that's the that's how far we've ever had to go with uh, colic um, or for teething as well. Then we could use uh, prickly ash for that, but uh, or gawkumish. Xanthoxylum americanus, but yeah, the um, yeah, it's pretty neat being able to use some of these, uh, uh, or being able to just hear what this medicine is good for. But yeah, I have no experience with it. Here's the other one we'll call Josh Shogelman. Uh, I forget what the uh, uh, another name for it. Uh, let me see. Mainly, there's uh, <laughs> show us gold thread. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Uh, let me see here. So I'll show you this one. Um, next, this is, uh, yeah, we will call it Josh Shalgaman or Blue Bead Lily, uh, Blue Bead Clintonia, uh, um, Blue Bead Clintonia, uh, which is uh, Clintonia Borealis. Um, let me just see. One second. Yeah, these uh, these leaves are pretty cool. When you uh, um, crush them up, they smell like uh, cucumbers. And uh, you know how everybody's always uh, doing everything, you, doing everything you can, absolutely everything you can to keep mosquitoes away, to keep bugs away. Uh, I got. Uh, um, one guy said, uh, where were we? I don't want to get this wrong. Um, uh, ah, anyway, I'll just tell you. Um, so blue bead lily, Clintonia borealis, uh, some people will call it azal totalance, like a little yellow bell, um, um, or some people will call it just totalance, or uh, what are some other names? Josh Hagelman, again, just because the berries uh, come from a stem that goes through the plant, the way that you could see the way these leaves sort of come out, uh, the way that they branch out, and then you get the stem going right through the middle of all of it. Um, which I guess is not incredibly common. So, so you know, some of these plants are, we, will just be, yeah, Josh um to describe that. But um, what was I going to say now? Oh, yeah. Um, it was in uh, up north by Timmins, by Gogama, Metagumi. We were in Metagumi and this guy, uh, this old guy, uh, grabbed a bunch of these. I think it happened in... Maybe not. Anyway, it happened in um, Metagami. Anyway, he grabbed some of those leaves and crushed them up. And they smell like cucumbers. Like if you took a bunch of cucumber rinds and crushed them up uh, the way that they would smell. And then he put them in his pocket. It was a little bit nauseating. It was like an extremely fragrant cucumber. Uh, if you can imagine what that would smell like. Uh, but yeah, he put them in his pocket right here. And he was like, you'll get, you, you'll get a bit less, he said. And, and then I, right away I was like, oh, well, I like the sounds of that. Because I hate it when everybody's like, keeps mosquitoes away. So you won't get bit to make it sound absolute like at all. But I was like, oh, okay, you got bit less. I, I could believe it. Uh, and then it, we, I put some in my pocket. And then I was kind of freaking out after because it, it seemed legit. Like I, like either, either the mosquitoes just went away. You know how like you'll be outside and then after a while either, either you just don't feel the mosquito bites anymore or uh, they, they seem to just go away or be a little bit more docile. That could have happened. But I don't know, man. Every time I get the chance, I'll, I shove these in my pocket and it, and it, seems, to, it seems to help like a lot of it sometimes maybe just a little bit but it, but it certainly I've, I've noticed anyway so test it out and let me know uh but yeah you just take one of those leaves and just sort of crush it up you bruise it you don't smash it up into into a paste but you just sort of bruise it and you'll you'll notice right away the way the leaf looks when you do that uh it's a really soft uh um luscious leaf it's really uh i don't know how you would say that it's real thick and juicy but yeah you put it just in your pocket and it was legit, man. It seemed to work real well. This one's used a lot in midwifery too. You use these roots, uh, these long, uh, long, thin roots under the underground here. Uh, those are used uh, in very small amounts. It's not a, that's not really a big deal, but a lot of people will remember this being used um, e either just before labor or during labor. Uh, and and the way it was described is that it helps with timing it helps to keep everything all in check with uh, uh making sure the colostrum is coming in on time making sure 
that um, some of the studies that have been done on it, keeping, uh, keeping your kidneys and your liver uh, during labor in check, making sure that nothing is getting out of whack. Uh, and so maybe that could have been an understanding of it as well. But yeah, it's used often in, uh, for that. And for, in a, it has a really sweet role in midwifery. Um, I really like that. Let's see if I'm, uh, um, where is my, there you are. So this one here, um, is, uh, star flower. Star flower is, uh, it's kind of freaky here. Let me see if I can get out of here to be able to say this properly. It's another Borealis plant. Um, yeah, so Lizamachia. <laughs> I probably not even saying that right. Lizamachia uh, Borealis. Or try and tell us or something like that. Um, uh, let's see here. What is happening? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> I thought I disappeared. Um, so, yeah, this one here, Starflower. Uh, um, Lizim Lizimachia, Lizimachia Borealis. It's another really dominant plant in boreal forests. Uh, medicine, I don't know how this is used, uh, or if it even has a very strong or significant medicinal purpose. Uh, but um, it's a really beautiful flower to look at. Um, it's really, really small, really, really subtle little dot sitting on the floor of the forest. Um, uh, but yeah, for this one, uh, we will call it Nauwok, um, and I have no idea why, but, uh, Nauwobak, um, um, Nauwobak. That's the only name that I've ever heard for it. No book. Um, or or uh, maybe no book. But yeah, I do not understand why. <laughs> or uh, what that name is describing. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh, it's, it's 27 degrees. That's not too bad. Uh, yeah, so... Um, no, buck star flower. Yeah, I don't know how it's used medicinally. Um, but yeah, here's a here's a pretty common one. I wonder. Uh, maybe I'll cover that one when I get to the flowers. Let me see if I can get closer in this picture. Oh, I was trying to take a picture of the flowers, but it wasn't focusing. I was getting wrecked, man. There was so much bugs when I was out there. Yeah. Okay, so here, this one is um, uh, slide show. This one is uh, Bapashkyu, uh, and so this is balsam fir or ABs balsamia. Uh, I think it's balsamia. <laughs> Matt will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but yeah, this one is um, uh, 
Bapashkyu, Bapashkyu Atik, and uh, that name is describing uh, Bapashke. Bapashke is a uh, ruffed grouse, and so this is ruffed grouse's favorite tree to roost in for the night. This is where they always pop out of out of Bapashkyu, and so we named it after the relationship that the ruffed grouse has with this tree. Uh, and the reason why I just showed this this type of picture is because so that you could see the that these needles are occurring on, only on one plane uh they're not uh needles are not all the way around like they would be on a spruce so gone duck is a spruce and it'll have needles going all the way around but pashkyotik is flat and uh and so that's one of the biggest things to remember uh, a lot of people uh, uh will get this confused um, and so I just wanted to be able to take a little bit of a funky image there, not even a good one, <laughs> but to be able to, uh, so that you understood, uh, because, uh, you know, when you're taking all of these different names, Nishaba name, Latin names, uh, and then the common names, um, and some even multiple common names and multiple Nishlabe names. Uh, sometimes the name is describing a relationship that these plants have with a different creature. In the in the case of Bapashkiotik, with Bapashke, with rough grouse. And uh, and if you make the mistake of going to spruce trees, uh, because you forgot that one detail, you're not going to be able to witness or observe that relationship. And so uh, I just wanted to make sure to have this so that we could understand and so that we could see that yeah uh, these needles are only occurring on one plane and that's bapashkyu bapashkyu atik that's going to have the blisters on the bark as well uh and the and, and so it's a fir balsam fir is a fir uh you know we have multiple different types of conifer trees we have junipers we have cedars we have uh firs we have pines spruces um all different kinds uh, and so this is another fir tree it's one of my favorites it was my grandpa's favorite uh, that's what my mama mama says that this was his favorite uh, that's what he would say when they <laughs> if they ever uh, uh, when they would be camping him and her they'd be camping and and uh, that's what he wanted when they were settling in at camp, and he'd just say it over and over again, bugging her, he, she said. Um, but yeah, it's another fir. So furs, you, you know, uh, uh, same thing with uh, ground hemlock as a type of fir or Canadian yew. Uh, Taxus canadensis is going to have the, the needles are, will occur on one plane for furs. Spruces, the needles will be all the way around. Pine will be all the way around. Tamaracks, larches will be all the way around. But firs only on one plane. And so when you're looking at hemlock, Tsuga canadensis, uh, you will see that the needles will are very short, but only on one plane still. And so that's a fir. Uh, um, Tsuga canadensis hemlock. Gagagamish. And it makes good tea. Gagagamish avo. For after you set up your camp. Um, yeah, and a lot darker needles in color, a lot shinier. Uh, this one's my favorite. <laughs> I think I was doing this whole, uh, this whole time just because I wanted to show you this one. <laughs> this is, uh, um, fringed polygala. Um, fringed polygala is, uh, um, um, right here. It's, it's really cool. Um, wait, how come this is happening? Right, like, okay. Uh, a lot of people will call it, uh, um, fringed polygon. A lot of people will call it false wintergreen. Um, it's called, people will call it false wintergreen because you can see those leaves, uh, the leaves in the back there uh, are they will look a lot like wintergreen especially in the flower uh, um, sorry bear with me uh, yeah 
Okay, here we go. Yeah, I do see your questions. Yeah, so Fringe Polygala. Um, Fringe Polygala. Yeah, people call it uh, uh, False Wintergreen. Polygaloids Pausifolia is the Latin name. But you can see those leaves there. I put it right beside Wintergreen. You can see the Wintergreen leaves here are much thicker, more waxy and rounded. Uh, the Fringe Polygala is going to have a little bit of a tip. Uh, this one has a really fun, <laughs> really funny story. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, because I wonder if I could just get to... Um, it's a little bit, I'll get better, I'll get more used to doing these uh, in the future. I'm using like three different programs to be able to get this working. <laughs> My computer is already like blazing hot. But yeah, fringed polygala, there you can see the winter green and the polygala. You can see there's a very clear difference. But when the polygala is just by itself, it's a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit deceptive. You, you can you, you can easily confuse it. Anyway, uh, what it does, people will call it gay wings as well. Uh, gay wings because of these two leaves, two flower petals coming off to the side. So it's really, really bright to attract pollinators, to attract different flies and bees and uh, things like that. Uh, and so they'll come to the flower to come and thinking that it's going to taste very delicious. It's going to have some sweet nectar in there, but it doesn't. Uh, what it has instead are these fringes on the tip and those fringes i wish i could have had a little video i tried to take a little video it didn't end up working out so i didn't even have it on here but yeah these little fringes uh that's where the plant that's where the flies and everything all the pollinators are are uh more inclined to land on those fringes on the tip uh to be able to suck the nectar out of here but remember there's no nectar so what happens when they land on that uh, uh on those fringes uh the fringes get weighed down and what happens when the when the when the fringes are weighed down inside? You see that little appendage. I hope you guys can see that pretty clear. But that little appendage is uh, 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 is like a pistol that's that's full of pollen. Uh, and when the fly lands on the fringes, it weighs down the 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 the. the um, and that's like a it's like a trigger mechanism. What he's doing is when he lands on those fringes, he's pulling the trigger, and that little pistol shoots him in the face with pollen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way that it pollinates and so he's like oh pretty flower lands on it and gets shot and so they're all full of pollen and he's like oh man and then you know the uh how do you say the um uh memory of a fly he'll go fly over here and he'll be like oh some uh, some uh some maybe some mayflower or uh something like this but then he'll see another purple flower oh look at that one and then he'll he'll land on it and then they weigh it down and get shot again. Another purple flower, and he'll, that's how the plant pollinates itself. Is uh, is like by weaponry. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of funny. Uh, but we will call this one the Nishnaba name for fringed polygala. We'll call it tzikkejivik, uh, tzikkejivik, uh, or uh, tzik. Uh, uh, um, uh, and so we will add that uh, diminutive sort of suffix again to make sure we're understanding we're looking at a very small little flower. Uh, uh, but here's the... Um, uh, I, wonder, I don't even uh, think about that one. I don't know what that one means. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, here's, um, oh, there was a bee. Cool. Cool beans. There's, um, the, the leaves I had showed you earlier here. Sorry for being so, uh, disorganized, but here's, uh, uh, Aurelia nauticalis is, um, uh, wild sarsaparilla or, um, wild sarsaparilla or, um, uh, what was I? What was? It? What else is it called? Some people just call it rabbit root, uh, or false ginseng, even though it's in the same family as ginseng. But it looks uh, pretty much exactly like ginseng. A lot of people will mistake it for poison ivy because it's got uh, technically each branch. It has three branches. Each branch is going to have five leaves, but everyone will just see those three because they're so trained to stay away from poison ivy. We see those three leaves, and we're like, ah, and then we run away. Uh, but um, the 
uh, wild sarsaparilla, we will call it wobbles jibic. And so rabbit root wobbles is a rabbit and jibic is a root. And so we will call this wobbles jibic uh, to talk about that. When this plant first comes out in the spring, it's it's like really thin and it's just dark red, just like poison ivy. And so, it, you know, it looks kind of freaky when it first pops out. Um, but here are the flowers. They're just starting to bloom now. Uh, bears eat so much. The, the wild sarsaparilla is probably like one of the most abundant woodland plants. Uh, so there's so many of them. And uh, the berries, they're pretty good. And bears love them. And so if you ever find bear poop, it's probably like 80% of wild sarsaparilla uh, seeds and berries inside. So yeah, it's got the uh, real fine little white flowers, lots to attract pollinators, lots of food for the pollinators. And so it's usually just full and it's a very successful pollinator. Um, uh, and and uh, But yeah, usually you don't see these, uh, the flowers. Uh, um, they usually freak you out uh, more later when the berries turn, when they ripen and turn dark purple color. Uh, but yeah. Uh, when you know when you're playing around in the forest and moving stuff around you'll usually get the opportunity to see them but yeah a lot of people didn't even know that these were there but they look kind of freaky they're kind of nummy um but yeah wobbles jeevik oh we could talk about that later <laughs> um so um let's see here okay still no questions. Alrighty, we could go a little bit more. Here, so here, um, there's a couple different things in uh, in the Schnabel when that I want that I'm always uh, excited to be able to sort out uh, for everybody. So red oak, uh, Quercus rubra. Um, there's a lot of issues when it comes to Quercus, uh, all of the different types of oak trees uh, when it comes to Schnabel when, and so. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to make a little resource later, something a little bit uh, more well done than, than just a YouTube live. Uh, but the um, uh, Quercus ruba, the red oak, is Tigmish. And Tigmish is uh, um, red oak. And Mijmish is white oak. And Boganmish is bur oak. Uh, they, they, all have their, they all have their own name. And uh, a lot of the times we're getting them confused uh and so i have a lot of fun setting everybody straight so um tigamish uh uh and mishmish red oak versus white oak uh mishmish what that word is talking about is the deep furrowed bark red oak um tigamish uh stays pretty smooth uh when it gets very old but a white oak is going to become very furrowed very quick and so there'll be these deep gouges mishmish and so that's the way that we differentiate between the two uh and bagandmish is uh um uh is uh bur oak uh, uh um just describing you know a, a different way that uh, uh bagan that bur oak is going to look but yeah this one was red oak uh and it was re it was really nice to see everything popping out yesterday um this is uh uh mountain maple um mountain maple i don't know uh um i don't know any uses of it uh at all i don't know anybody who really uses it but um mountain maple is acer's um Acer, it's not spicata, but it's pretty much like spicata. Uh, um, yeah, I'm trying to remember Nishnaba name uh, for mountain maple. <laughs> I should have thought about this before I even came on here. Let me see if you guys are asking any questions. Um, no, no questions. Uh, it's like... Uh, 
Já chogou para me gon. Já That's uh, I'm pretty sure that's it. I should have took more pictures so I could show you what that means. Uh, but it's just talking about the way the the way the keys look. Já chogou. Já Oh man. Uh, uh, Go me gon. Já chogou me gon. That alder stain stain my hands. Uh, what was I? I don't know what else. There's a little ash. It's not a good picture at all. Oh yeah, here's a bronze. Uh, uh, beaked beaked hazelnut. Beaked hazelnut. Uh, bronze. You see, he's got little catkins there for the pollen. Um, but it looks just like a birch tree. And, uh, um, but it's really small. It's a really common, a really abundant shrub. And it, it sets its fruit underneath. So it sets the hazelnuts underneath. Uh, and they're called beaked hazelnuts because those the hazelnut will have a big, long uh, appendage on the, on the casing. Uh but the beaked hazelnut it's pretty cool um so i don't know i don't know how true this is but there's the 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 company ferrero rocher that makes the chocolates with the hazelnut inside they uh um i think they uh, what was happening is they got most of their hazelnuts from turkey and then there was like uh some civil war or unrest that's happening there uh i'm not too familiar with uh but um they're not they're basically they're not allowed to get their hazelnuts there anymore <laughs> they're not allowed to operate their business there anymore so they're all in ontario <laughs> they're all in ontario and in upper uh upper peninsula of michigan uh collecting wild beaked hazelnuts to keep that company alive and uh and so they're all wild harvesting and the thing about the hazelnuts is uh one of the reasons why we don't really know that uh how many hazelnut trees there are which there are like an absolute boatload in every forest that i've ever been in there's always a ton of hazelnuts um it, it, the hazelnut themselves are very concealed being uh set underneath the plant and the the way the structure of the plant the way that it kind of hangs over uh it hides them very well on top of the them being very camouflaged you know they'll ripen in a green casing uh on the tree and so uh you, they're they're pretty hard to notice uh, but, uh, so you have to actually be grabbing the, the branches and flipping them over to be able to see all of the different fruit sets, uh, all of the, diff all of the hazelnuts. Uh, but, um, the one, one thing that the company, uh, apparently has said is that they, uh, they have a newfound hatred to, uh, red squirrels. Because red squirrels always get the nuts before they do, uh, and so they 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 left this war in Turkey, and now it's a war against red squirrels in Ontario and in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan because uh, they always get them first. <laughs> Because uh, the squirrel will take them and they will uh, store them in the, in a in a cache that will that's uh, partly responsible to finish the last stages of ripening, and so they harvest them early before they're ripe. Uh, and so they have a little bit of an edge on the wild harvesters, I guess. And so they get uh, all of those hazel, uh, all of the hazelnuts, um, yeah, before that company. But yeah, you'll see a bunch of people out picking hazelnuts uh, for the last couple of years now. Uh, the, the hazelnuts, they have uh, this hair on the outside of the seed. Uh, no one listens to me when I say this. If I'm ever out in the bush, like with a bunch of kids or something, they'll have that. They'll have that uh, um, urge as soon as I say that's a hazelnut. They just grab it and, and start eating. Uh, but those little hairs on the hazelnut are really thin and really stiff, uh, um, but also pretty brittle. So anyway, when you grab them, it's like a cactus 
all those uh, little needles, all of those little hairs will embed uh, and you don't really notice until it's too late until you're moving around and then you could feel it uh, and so that's like a it's a real awful feeling and um, you need to use tape to be able to pull those off is the best way uh, use some tape uh, or even uh, some sticky resin to be able to just pluck those out of your hand if you get them in or or just to harvest them with gloves uh, this family is just just notorious like even ironwood uh, ironwood is going to make seeds and those are by far the 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 most irritating little hairs they embed inside of your hand and it cause so much inflammation and it's like it's so bad uh, but the ironwood is worse because they're so concealed that there's so, such an inconspicuous little uh, little hairs at least on hazelnut it's very dramatic and it's like better be careful if you want to touch me but yeah you get all these kids just busting in the patch of hazelnuts and just start grabbing them popping them open and and uh, putting them beside the fire trying to roast them and you know kids trying to be creative or being creative but yeah those are a good snack bagan is little nuts bagan is a nut and a whole bunch of nuts is buganok so a lot of people say that's where the term bannock came from. Uh, yeah, here's the striped maple. You can see the stripes, Mosmish, Acer, Pennsylvanicum. Uh, you can see all those bright stripes, blue lines. Uh, the way the leaf looks, I forget the term, uh, but there's a term to describe the leaves uh, that start in one shape and then transform into a mature shape like lettuce will do that and uh, and mosmish are are probably two of the most common species of plants that do that in North America but there's a term that you, that is used to describe that uh, transformation so you can see the leaves for mosmish start out really long and thin and then they they'll broaden and right out uh, to look like duck feet they say in uh, chimnasing that's the duck feet tree, uh, but this is Mosmish, striped maple, Acer Pennsylvanicum. Wait, that's a good medicine, that one. Oh, yeah, right here, too. Um, okay, now I lost you guys again. Oh, man. Okay, I gotta get better at this. Uh, the, so, okay, I am here, okay, so Telia Americana, basswood, uh, Uigo Bish, we'll call it, Uigo Pamish, uh, these ones have the best tasting leaves, these are the most amazing leaves to find and eat, like, now, um, oh yeah, those, they're, that frog, um, yeah, so basswood, Uigo Bish, Uigo Pamish, Telia Americana, uh, these leaves they have heart-shaped leaves uh, it, what's really interesting about the leaves you could see sort of in this one in the back you can't really see it here but one lobe is always way bigger than the other lobe on for each leaf just like your heart has one lobe that's bigger than the other so this is really good medicine for your heart but these leaves are absolutely phenomenal to just pluck them off and eat i i uh, uh um my daughter like absolutely loves them uh and so she's always pulling them off and always uh munching on them like when we go for a walk there's a couple trees that we pass that that we make sure she gets a couple couple leaves to munch on and then when we get home from a walk she always has green all over in her teeth <laughs> But then, uh, yeah, I, I was working somewhere. My mom was here baby, uh, babysitting. My mom was here visiting um, uh, in Peterborough. And I went out to work for the day. And uh, one of the things that my mom wanted to do was take my daughter for a walk. And, and so they went out for a walk together. And then Ruth was riding on her bike. And then she stopped and threw her helmet off and jumped off and ran into the side of the uh, side of the trail and then just grabbed a bunch of basswood and started shoving it in her mouth those leaves and my mom ran over my mom didn't know what was happening ran over and she put her hand inside of my daughter's mouth and pulled out all those leaves and was like what are you doing and my my daughter was all traumatized saying, my daddy said i can <laughs> 
<laughs> it's real funny. So I came home after work, and uh, where I put the keys for the vehicle, there was a big slobbery basswood leaf, and I was like, "What happened?" So my mom had to explain that I taught Ruth that these are edible, and my mom did not necessarily know. Um, but yeah, these uh, uh, when those leaves first come out, man, they're so delicious. I eat so many of them. Oh yeah, check this out. I saw this too. I thought that frog looks funny. It has told B Pig Maki. Uh, he ran across the road uh, and he was all traumatized because my car was squealing because water got on my belt. Anyway, uh, there's two frogs here though. One is hitching a ride. <laughs> See his arm going around here? And then there's two eyes. Kind of freaked me out when I saw that. But yeah, there was two cruising around together uh, giving piggybacks. I don't know what I was looking at here. Uh, oh yeah, that butterfly. Okay, I'm gonna run out of pictures here soon. So this one, um, this is uh, um, black ash, Fraxinus, uh, Fraxinus nigra, is. Um, black ash, Wisagak, we'll call it. But yeah, this one, I don't know, you can't really tell from the picture. I thought, for whatever reason, I thought that you would be able to. But yeah, yeah uh, black ash is really corky. It feels like you're touching a cork, like from a bottle. Uh, it's a really neat feeling, and it's so it's real spongy. Uh, white ash, uh, boyock, is really woody and flaky. Uh, and, and, and really tough, really hard. But black ash is, is going to have that really soft, uh, corky bark that I thought you'd be able to see pretty good from the picture because it, it was pretty striking just from when I was driving past. Oh, yeah, and then we were... Oh, my savage cat. That was our bark baths that we made. A whole bunch of bark baths. 65 using alder, poplar, willow. But yeah, that's all the pictures that I have from yesterday. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah, the uses, a uh, little bit. I mean, uh, today I was a little bit upset because today I wanted to go for a walk and, and then uh, with sit at each plant and talk about their names and why they're named that and and then maybe how they can be used uh but i couldn't because youtube wouldn't let me yet i guess there was an issue there so i thought oh, okay so i ran home as fast as i could to be able to uh still still have a little bit of a session with you guys but to show uh a lot of these uh from the pictures that i took from the pictures that i took yesterday and I thought that'd be pretty solid if we just went over that. Um, I think I, every now and then I covered a little bit of the uses uh, for when I did know. Starflower, I think, is one that, that has always uh, stumped me. Uh, we sagak, white, black ash, you know, we always talk about that one and how good it is for women as a women's medicine. Um, basswood, I mentioned your heart, how oh, it's very good for your heart and pretty good little snack. Uh, um, but yeah, yeah. So there's a couple mysteries, you know, that, I, that, I, that I knew, uh, would probably be a little bit of an issue, but, uh, the name for, um, uh, uh, mountain maple, uh, uh, is kind of a funny one and then uh, just the issue with the plants being called Jashagomen and how you know this is a name that's applied to so many different plants and I think that if we all sort of consolidate together uh, we'll be able to uncover some really uh, neat names for some of the other species 
uh, uh, instead of just calling them all Josh Shogelman. Uh, there's, I think there, maybe there's an issue with only remembering that one name. Uh, and so I like to use these platforms, or I would like to use these platforms as an opportunity to sort of consolidate uh, everything that we've, we've uh, been taught and uh, see, if, uh, see if this uh, makes sense. Uh, but yeah, cool. Uh, that was already an hour. Oh, that was perfect because I just went through all my pictures now. But yeah, that was fun. Uh, you know, if we ever get a chance to do this again, uh, I sort of was getting the hang of it near the end. See, uh, my mouse died now, of course. But yeah, check this out. I could just come here. Now I'm in another one. Uh, um, but yeah, and then I could just come back like this. I'm getting the hang of it. Okay. So if I ever have to do a wa another walk, I want to take, I wanted to do all of these Friday sessions outside somewhere and actually get outside to do a walk. Um, uh, but that, I couldn't do that today. Uh, so hopefully we figure that out. We might uh, end up just migrating over to Facebook if I'm not allowed to go live on YouTube. Uh, it makes sense you're not allowed to go live on YouTube though. I guess I should have thought about that. YouTube live mobile. I'm not allowed. The account is too young. So we'll figure that out. But yeah, if ever I have to stay inside to do another session, uh, I'll make sure that I have a ton more photos to go through, a ton of more pictures to be able to fly through and show you. Now that I know that I can do this. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Cool. Well, for everybody that comes and hangs out here, we'll see you next Friday. Uh, I'll be on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday L live. But yeah, don't want to go over an hour. We'll see you later. Bama, peace. <laughs>